Well, following yesterday's inquest conclusion, police were keen to point out that firearms officers in this country rarely use their weapons. Unlike the United States, for example, where figures for fatal police shootings aren't even officially collected, despite an estimated 400 to 600 a year. Here, the, publisher, the figures are published annually, and this is what the most recent statistics show. Over four years to 2012, the police in England and Wales have been authorised to use firearms on more than 68,000 occasions. Firearms have actually been discharged during 18 of those incidents, resulting in nine fatal shootings by police. Last year, there were no fatal shootings. Well, last night on this programme, Mark Duggan's mother, Pam, told me why she didn't want to talk to the police. Did you just speak to the police now over there no, when they came out? I don't want to speak to them. Because they've said they want to speak to you. No. Why? What for? Why did they want to speak to me? They all know they, one of them killed my son. Wherever, what station, wherever, they killed my son. In a moment, we'll hear from a friend of the Duggan family, Stafford Scott. But first, earlier today, I went to Scotland Yard to talk to the Metropolitan Police Commissioner, Sir Bernard Hogan Howe. I started by asking him if there was anything for which he owed Pam Duggan an apology. I think, first of all, what we all accept is the, the verdict of the jury, which was, you know, this was found to be a lawful event. It's a shocking event for Pam Duggan and for their family because obviously they've lost a son, they've lost a member of their family. That's a great shock. But it's important to notice it was a lawful uh, killing, uh, sad as though, as though it was. Do you regret Mark Duggan's killing? Of course. I mean, how could you not? I mean, police officers come to work every day to protect people, not to kill them. We come to work every day, to, if we have to, to arrest people. But when somebody loses their life, that's a terrible thing. And despite the fact that this was said to be lawful, despite the fact that it's accepted that Mark was carrying a gun in that taxi and got out of it, the taxi with it, but was found not to have had it in his hand when shot. Um, that doesn't justify that someone has to die for that. That's not the purpose of the police. So, of course, we regret his death. Do, does it make it a mistake that he wasn't, in fact, armed at the time your officer shot him? Yeah, but the jury didn't say that. And, you know, I, I wasn't sat in you know, the inquest for the, the three months that they sat and heard all the evidence. But they didn't conclude that. And I think... Yeah, of course, we, we carry out thousands of these operations uh, in a year. These are you know, high-risk situations, and yet, very rarely will we discharge our weapons, and even less often will we hit someone, and even less often will we kill them. I have to make the point, I have to be open and honest about this, which is that people, as a criminal, carry a gun and wander around the streets of London with a gun. This puts everybody at risk. It puts themselves at risk. It puts the public at risk. And we, the police, are put at risk in trying to intervene in that situation. So he was and responsible it, for his own death? No, that isn't what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, in the blink of an eye, a police officer has to make a very difficult decision. And at some level, the jury must have understood this. Isn't it a, a mess when we've got a situation where police officers won't speak to the IPCC, won't well, give evidence? Well, I've got to be a little careful in this case because the IPCC have not yet reported. But I'm going to make a very clear comment, which is that, in my view, police officers should, when asked a question about what happened at an event, give a very clear account uh, of what they saw and what they heard. So for me, it is important that police officers insist that investigation. This weekend, there's a vigil. How prepared are you for civil unrest? Well, the first thing, we, uh, we accept that it's a perfect democratic right to, uh, for people to protest. In this case, the family want to have a vigil. A vigil is about marking someone's death. What we're going to do is to make sure we keep talking to people, talk to the family, we'll talk to people in the area and keep communicating. But and they won't talk to you. I mean, you say you'll talk to the family. I mean, Pam Duggan doesn't want to talk to you. No, but I accept that entirely from the immediate members of family, and, but we still keep trying. We will always try, and we'll talk to intermediaries, and we'll talk to people who will be able to talk to the family in the area. Everyone I spoke to last night down there were, was saying, you can't trust the police, it's open season on black men. I mean, th there's a real crisis level of, of a trust problem here, isn't there? There was last night, and clearly some of the people are very emotional about it, but I think it's really important to notice a couple of things. The first thing is that actually we've seen a huge rise in the confidence in the police in London over the last two years. We Amongst who? I mean, not in Tottenham. Amongst all the population of London, including some of the people in Haringey. Now, I'm not saying everybody, I'm not trying to make that point. But secondly, one of the big concerns at the time of Mark Duggan's shooting was around stop search. Well, I'd heard that. And I've done something about it. I've not just talked about it, we've done something about it. We've reduced stop search by about a third. And we've got better at it. And less people have got stabbed. It's quite an achievement, isn't it, to have one part of, 
London against you in, in Tottenham and to have the elite of London right here in Westminster against you as well. I mean, you've got Conservative MPs on the one hand and people in Tottenham saying you can't trust the police. Conservatives here because of Plebgate, people in Tottenham because of Mark Duggan. There's a, there's a tendency, perhaps for the press sometimes, to roll a lot of things together. Let's just stick with this particular event. This is a serious issue. This is the death of a young man. But, but this question of trust goes across communities, that's my point. You've lost, you know, the elite here in the heart of London and this poor community in Tottenham. Yeah, but I think it's really important to just stick to this particular issue. I think right. it's actually disrespectful to the family and to the death of Mark Duggan to try and roll lots of things together. We're talking about it because it's a serious issue where an inquest has just reported. And I've also pointed out that actually, objectively, if we ask the people of London, not just some parts of them, not some selective parts of them, they believe that actually the confidence in the police has risen. You say you're open to ideas and advice and some of it's been pretty brutal. Let me just read out one suggestion from the revolutionary Daily Telegraph uh, columnist Dan Hodges. Stop shooting people who are unarmed, take a long hard look at the officers you give weapons to, and when you do shoot people, stop lying about how and why you did it. Isn't that hyperbole? Isn't that actually something that's completely inaccurate? We deal with probably 3,000 uh, firearms incidents or firearms threats over a couple of years. We can count on the fingers of one hand how many times we discharge the weapons. So it's not as though we are a gun-happy lot who go around shooting people. What a lot of those people are also saying is that this is about race. You know, David Lammy, the MP, has said this brings back echoes of the Lawrence investigation. Do you believe that race played any role here? Do you believe there is still a race problem? in the Metropolitan Police? Well, what I was trying to acknowledge right at the beginning is I, I wouldn't, I, I obviously we're talking about the, the death of Mark Duggan. But if that's all I do in a very forensic way and, and pick one detail and the jury said this, it would be ignorance of me and insensitive to ignore the fact that over 30, 40 years, black people in this city and some of the minority groups in the city have had a bad, bad experience with the Metropolitan Police. That's their reality, not this final event. So I'm sensitive to that, that reality that, you know, it's all right saying, well, X means A and we, you know, pedantically put points together. They feel that their legacy in this uh, city and sometimes in this country is a system that doesn't help black people. I respect that. 